bombing. Two million illegal immigrants in California. Boisterous crowd chanting outside City Hall today against Proposition 187 on this, the day before the election. Welcome back. This week is the anniversary of one of the most controversial ballot measures in the history of the initiative referendum and recall from the progressive movement in California over a century ago. It was called Prop 187, and it denied social services, all services, to those who were in the country, in the state, in violation of federal immigration law. With us, Gustavo Arellano, who uh, many remember from his column, Ask a Mexican from the Orange County Weekly, now with the Los Angeles Times. He has something in the newspaper today, an essay on what we learned about Prop 187. Thank you for coming. Gracias for having uh, me. For people who don't remember this, you don't remember it, I remember it. It was extremely controversial, and um, there was a tremendous amount of political upheaval. Where were you at that time? I was a sophomore in high school, 15 years old at Anaheim High School, and I remember the way I found out about 187. I was walking back home, a truck full of white boys start yelling at me, 187, 187. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. It's the penal code for murder, by yeah, the way. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, <laughs> I didn't even know that, though, then. And then I walk home, I actually watched Channel 4 News. I turned on the TV, and there was a, a, a segment about Proposition 187. Then I realized... Okay, so they're yelling at me because I'm Mexican, so they want me out of the state. They think I am somehow destroying California, and I just found it very sad. Uh, we should point out, again, it passed with 60% of the vote. Uh, it was set aside by a, a federal bench. Mm -hmm. But the ramifications of this over the past 25 years have been enormous. Proposition 187 is as fundamental to changing California as a gold rush and Proposition 13. The whole reason why we have a supermajority of Democrats in Sacramento now, in both sides of the legislature, is because of Proposition 187. It woke up a generation of Latinos who said, I'm not going to be demonized anymore. My parents are not going to be demonized anymore. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to run. At the same time, though, Proposition Position 187 also uncorked the xenophobic genie that has spread all across the United States and led directly to Trump being in the White House, using the same rhetoric that Pete Wilson was using 25 years ago. Should point out, besides your essay, there's a podcast that has dropped called California. This is California mm -hmm. from the Los Angeles Times. First several episodes, you were talking about this topic, and then you interview, for for example, Barbara Kiley, yeah, yeah. Uh, who had a hand in all this. Yeah, Proposition 187, she was one of the consultants, her and her husband, Barbara and Bob Kiley. And if you remember, the whole initiative was called the Save Our State Initiative. So one of the great anecdotes from that uh, from the podcast, I asked her, Where, who thought of the idea Save Our State? She's like, oh, we thought of it over four margaritas at El Torito. <laughs> That's true. Amazing. <laughs> Gloria Molina is also, she, she was a former LA County supervisor. She got into the act because of this. She got a lot of death threats. She got a lot of hate mail. I, I was able to go to the Huntington Library in San Marino, read some of those hate letters that she was getting into. But there, it was a civil war, really, in, Southern, in California over 187. That's what people can't believe anymore, that an anti-illegal immigrant initiative would have passed with 59 to 41 percent. That would be impossible in the state. No one even dared. The Republican Party doesn't even dare bring it up statewide. Uh, uh, Peter Nunez was one of the architects of 187. What did he tell you? Peter Nunez was a U.S. attorney on the border. He said that he was there being able to show politicians what's going on with undocumented people coming to the border. So he created it. He had very not, not nice things to say about Dan Lundgren. That's all, the former attorney general of California. Because? Uh, because he felt that the reason Lundgren did not want to appeal 187 to the federal courts was because he was looking for his political future, did not want to anger Latino voters. The essay today, the, the podcast... Um, what do you want people to get from it? I want people to learn what happened 25 years ago, explains the America of today, explains the California of today. This is California history. This is not just Mexican-American history. This is history that impacts all of us. And also, this is a way to show folks that the LA Times is doing stories that matter about California. So, yeah, have fun. Gusta Download it. Gustavo Ariano from the Los Angeles Times, a native of Anaheim. Dad was a... Truck driver. Mom was a... Tomato can. Okay, hunts. there you go. <laughs> the American dream. Thank you very much for joining us. Gracias. Congresswoman Katie Hill of California's 25th District calls it quits. Now there's a race on to replace her when we return.